my peculiar fate in this debate to be speaking last and therefore to have to digest the uh, statements of the other speakers. I must say this puts me in an odd position. I feel a bit like the mosquito in the nudist colony. I'm not sure where to begin. Uh, I, I guess I'll begin by noting that there were two definitions that have been advanced by the other side that actually I think help our case. The first one is the idea that people who have religious beliefs are hypocritical. But notice that in making this accusation, what was being alleged is that religious believers have, hi have ideals higher than they can live up to. And this is advanced as hypocrisy. In other words, holding up to a standard and falling short of it. Now that is actually not hypocrisy. If you read the Bible, Jesus doesn't call people hypocrites because their ideals are too high. He calls people hypocrites who pretend to be one thing and are really another. The problem with the Pharisees wasn't that they had high principles, is that they didn't have principles, but they pretended to be something they weren't. So we've seen a subtle shift in the meaning of hypocrisy, a shift that is advanced by the atheist side. Why? To basically pull down the moral ideals that we hold up that are higher than ourselves. That, I would suggest, is a very bad thing. Now, Matthew made the argument that religion is a function of where you're born. If you're born in India, you're going to be a Hindu. Uh, actually, I was born in India. I was raised Catholic. But never mind <laughs> that your religious identity is formed as a result of where you're born. If you're born in Afghanistan, you're a Muslim and so on. Well, I think this applies to all our beliefs. Let's say, for example, that somebody born in Oxford, England, is more likely to subscribe to the theory of evolution than someone born in Oxford, Mississippi. Somebody who is born in New York City is more likely to affirm Einstein's theory of relativity than someone born in New Guinea. Now, what does that say about whether evolution and relativity are true? Nothing. The fact of your birth is irrelevant to the merit of the idea. So there's a kind of sleight of hand here. You have to judge the ideas by their own merits. Now, would the world be better without religion? You can't answer that question without looking to see what religion has done in the world, but you've got to compare it to what the world would be like without religion.